Hey everyone, this is Michael Liao with Tips from the Test Kitchen. To make a really decadent and kind of impressive caramel apple dip, we're just gonna combine one softened eight ounce package of cream cheese with a third a cup of dark brown sugar and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And I'm just gonna cream these things together until they're well combined. Once it's well combined, you'll be able to see that it's all the same light brown color without any pockets of sugar remaining. And it's important that you use the dark brown sugar because it has the richness of molasses. You can use either one large 10 ounce ramekin or two smaller ramekins. Once you add the dip to the ramekin, it's important that it's nice and firm. And so we're gonna chill it for at least two hours. You can chill it overnight if that's easier for you. Now that my dip is smoothed in my ramekin, I'm just gonna cover it with some plastic wrap and pop it in the fridge. Now it's time to finish making my caramel apple dip. I've sprinkled the sugar over the surface of my dip and I've filled it with ice and I've put the ramekin with the chilled dip in the center of the ice. Ice prevents the dip itself from cooking by keeping it cool, but it allows the sugar on the top to caramelize and melt when exposed to the intense heat of the broiler. In addition to being really visually appealing and fun to kind of crack with a spoon, it also provides a delightful crunchy contrast. My broiler is on and the top rack of my oven is about five inches beneath it. That close proximity to the broiler will help the sugar caramelize evenly. Halfway through the five minutes that it's underneath the broiler, simply rotate the pan 180 degrees and this will just help everything to caramelize evenly. You can see that the surface of the dip is nicely caramelized and you can just break it with a spoon and enjoy it on an apple slice. This dip is perfect for anyone with a decent sweet tooth. A caramelized onion dip is really simple and only requires a few ingredients, but the trick is perfectly caramelizing the onions, which requires a lot of time, but only a little bit of effort. In a pot, you're going to coat the bottom of the pot with some olive oil, and then I'm placing three onions that I have sliced and I'm cooking it over medium low heat for about an hour and a half. Just stirring every now and again to make sure that nothing is sticking to the bottom and they brown evenly from the inside out rather than searing and browning on the outside. In a stand mixer, I beat together eight ounces of cream cheese with a cup of sour cream, a half a cup of mayonnaise, some Worcestershire sauce and salt and pepper. This simple caramelized onion dip is delicious with any kind of cracker. To make our warm cheese and spicy pecan dip, you first have to make your spicy pecans. So on my baking sheet here, I have half a cup of pecans that I've roughly chopped. And I'm just gonna drizzle some olive oil and sprinkle some salt, pepper, and a little bit of cayenne pepper, toss them, and then throw them in a 350 degree oven. My pecans are done toasting, and I have now increased my oven temperature to 375 to get it ready for my cheese dip. I put 16 ounces of cream cheese into my food processor, and I'm gonna add one cup of mayonnaise, and just pulse until the mixture is smooth. The tip to make this dip perfect is to coat three quarters a cup of your shredded cheddar and a quarter cup of your Monterey Jack cheese with four teaspoons of cornstarch. Coating the shredded cheese and cornstarch helps absorb moisture as the cheese melts and so it's going to make for a much smoother uh, cheese dip and one that isn't stringy or clumpy. With the shredded cheese coated in cornstarch, we're now gonna add the cream cheese mixture and some salt and pepper. Now that my dip is ready, I have a one quart cast iron right here that I'm going to spread the dip in. I'm also going to top the dip with the remaining quarter cup each of sharp cheddar cheese and Monterey Jack cheese. And I'm gonna pop it in a 375 degree oven just until the edges and the surface start to brown. As soon as it comes out of the oven, just sprinkle your dip with the spicy pecans. And we're gonna set it aside and let it cool for just about five minutes before adding some fresh chives. Waiting these few minutes prevents the chives from wilting and becoming a dark brown color. I've got some toasted baguette slices here, and this dip is ready to go. Rich, creamy, tangy, nutty, and a little spicy. This cheese dip is perfect. With a spread like this, there's something for everybody to enjoy.